Fate of the Juvenile Offender, and that is a documentary that's been put together by Miriam Osei Ajiman, and it will be showing tonight at 9.30. She's here to tell us all about it. And you remember that about a week or two ago, we paid a visit to the Senior Correctional Center uh, at Roman Ridge, and it was all thanks to Miriam and also thanks to the authorities at the Correctional Center who gave us the opportunity to go have a look and feel of some of the creatives, um, you know, in that space, things created by the young ones. So bags, clothes, all kinds of things. And it was very eye-opening to think that a number of them were ready to go back home and start their own business because they were equipped uh, with the right resources as well. And so Miriam has done an in-depth cover of all of this, and she's going to tell us what really is causing the high rate of crime among children in the country. Good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you doing? Bella. I'm doing okay. Great job, by the way. Oh, thank you. I mean, even <laughs> just that day when we went there to cover for about 30 minutes, yeah. it was an eye-opener. There was so much that we learned from them. How much more you who has done a whole documentary on it? Yeah. First of all, what led to this documentary? Well, like you said earlier in your intro that, you know, the cases involving children who come into conflict with the lawyers on the rise, mm. and as a well-meaning Ghanaian, it would be a, a concern whether you're a parent or not. Mm -hmm. And so I sort of find out what's what's going on, what's the reason. Mm. Um, is this new? Of course it's new because if you look at the press now, there's a lot of news in that regard. Yeah. And so I started collecting data, doing research around it, and then I approached, of course, the Ghana Prison Service, and they were very receptive. Mm. So I decided to, you know, um, dig into this some more and some of the reasons and some of the things that I found I thought was quite revealing mm. yeah what were some of the things that she discovered well primarily when you speak to the authorities they would all agree that there's a lack of parenting mm. for a lot of these children um, I mean if you look at the backgrounds of a lot of the inmates there you find that they're either coming from broken homes mm -hmm. or a home where they are parents but particularly the father's you know, do not play the, you know, the father figure roles yeah. in those families. Mm -hmm. And so they end up either on the street or they join friends. And at that age, within the age of 18 to say 20, this is a, a period of a, a, a person's life where you you know, you become very attached to your peers. Mm -hmm. And so the issue of peer pressure comes in and it leads them from one incident to the other and to the other. Yeah. yeah, that's very worrying, but especially for these children. So what are some of the crimes that they had committed? Well. It ranges from all the crimes you find in the adult prisons. Mm. So you find theft, okay. you find armed robbery, Oof. and you find murder. Wow. Yes. Um, yeah, let me also add that the influence of social media has played a very key role in some of these offenses that have been committed by the children. Mm. So the offenses, it ranges from all, I mean, oh, all so the offenses yeah. you, can, you can imagine. And the reasons are different. Mm -hmm. But the out, you know, the end product is not too different from what you find in adult exactly. prisons. And so, what's the age range for these children in the senior correction? So centers? you're looking at from 15, 15, 14, um, 19. You know, yes, it's. Let me let me hold back. <laughs> I know. I wish I could because get I all the give information. But, <laughs> all of it but away. So are they made aware that you are in a correctional center and this is more like a juvenile prison? Are they aware of that? So I'm told that when they come in, they obviously come in very terrified. Yeah. And very confused and anxious because for them, this, that's the end of the road for them. Um, but then up during the orientation, they are made to understand that, yes, you are in detention. You're mm. not going to have the luxuries that you're used to and all of that. And the process of coming to terms with it and adjusting uh, can be a little rough for, you know, for the inmate. Mm. But those of them who are willing to reform over time, they, they come to terms with it and they reform. Yeah, they reform. So, for instance, the documentary um, documents former inmates okay. who are now doing very, very well. Mm. And then also inmates who came in and have adjusted quite well, mm -hmm. and they're in the process of being reformed. Okay. So the center gives them a holistic reformation program, if you may, mm. um, physically, psychologically, and even spiritually, okay. because on one of those occasions, I joined them during their church service. And of course, you know, it's also very important in the total well-being of a person. Yeah. So yeah, they, the, the Senior Correctional Center are doing some really good job. You guys were there. Yes, we were. And yeah. there was something shocking that I discovered, that we okay. don't have a Senior Correctional Center for 
girls in the country. Right. And in fact, this is the only correctional center for juveniles in the country. And so whether you're coming from the northern yes. part of Ghana, yes. you know, whichever part of it, you know, you, you all come and converge Absolutely. at one place. Yes. And so I was a little worried about that because I was asking the what happens to ASB, the girls? Yes, mm. what happens to the girls? And you said the girls barely commit these kind of crimes. Well, that's true, but then also there is the social welfare department has um, something similar, not like the senior correctional okay. center for 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 the girls. I see. And it's true that um, you know, as 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 far as you know, the number of girls who commit crimes or offenses mm. are concerned, it is not anywhere compared to. You know what the boys do mm. so it's rather small almost insignificant okay but i know that the social welfare department does have the unit were um, you able to cover that as well that will be in another production okay we're looking forward to that because yeah. we need to know what's been done to the girls as well who yes. may be um you know arrested and convicted for some of these crimes but are juveniles yeah but what was the state of the center we only got to see the parts where they displayed yes you know the, the their creators but what about where they sleep where they eat because you got to go yes. to those places yes how is it because they talked about lack of funding i know so when i was going to the center i mean because of the videos and pictures i'd seen it from the adult prison i expected something close to that mm. i wouldn't say the center is in the, the you know 100 percent perfect state but i was quite impressed with what i saw i see yeah for instance the dormitories are not overcrowded mm. the they have a very good we have very good classrooms um and they have teachers who come in and teach the children mm. they have workshops they wish they had more but what they have now they're making do with so if an, the inmates come in during the orientation they find out if you want to go to the formal school or mm -hmm. you want to go to you know you know learn a trade and they're making do with the workshops that they have yeah. unfortunately of course not all the children would like to do the programs that are available at the center, at the center and yes. so there's still there's still room to create more workshops for instance mm. some some of the kids are great artists and yeah. I, I know that they would love a workshop where they can go and paint and all of that mm -hmm. so it's not up to the standard internationally it's not 100 percent but they're making do with what they have as mm. far as food and all of that is concerned that's where the problem is because mm. asp said they feed on one city 80 pesos yes for three square meals yes that's disturbing yeah because even for regular i mean these are young boys yeah they require the, nutrition. The, exactly. Yeah. And they're feeding on one CD80 pesos yeah. all day? That's worrying. Well, yeah, all day. Well, you could say that all day. Um, I wouldn't say it's it's the very best. But comparing that to the adult prisons, um, you'd say this is this is better than the adult prison because also the senior correctional center is heavily dependent on phil philanthropists. Yeah. You know, so in that score, you'd say that it's it's somewhat better. Mm. than the adult prison, but it could be better. Still not enough, My concern yeah. is that these are children, mm -hmm. and after three years, which is a maximum sentence, they have to come back into the, the society. And when they come back, what happens after that is even more important than the time they've been there. Mm -hmm. The value they come to bring to, to society to the yeah. and themselves, because you don't want inmates coming back and committing crimes to go back again. Exactly. Exactly. You get what and I mean. And they said that was lower um, than yes. the adult prisons because yes. most of these children go back and start a trade or yeah. continue their education and yeah. things seem to be fine. But the families, in most cases, are not ready to accept these I was kids. going to say that one of the biggest setbacks in integrating these children is stigma. Yeah. You know, yeah. because for some families, I spoke to inmates who told me they've been there for more than six months and nobody's come to visit them. Yes. I spoke to inmates who, who told me that they've been there for two years and that the whole time they've been there, they've only seen their family once. Hmm. And also when I spoke to the officers, they tell me that when it's time to, you know, release them and go back, sometimes when they go back home, They're they don't, yes, they don't want to be received. Can you blame the family necessarily? And that's what I need to know, because as much as they are providing counseling for these children while right. they are in detention, do they extend that same level of counseling to the families of these children so that they understand that they may have been in a detention center for a while, but they are reformed now and it's okay to accept them back into the family? Well, they do that, but it's, um, I guess for the family, it's, it's a rather slower process. Why? Because sometimes the families are even the victims of the offense the children commit, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. And so um, it becomes difficult to forgive the children, for instance. Yeah. And also the fact that, you know, neighbors and friends would start pointing fig fingers, fingers at you. Them, that yeah. There was a mother I spoke to um, whose child was there. And after we did the interview, she called back and said, can you blur my face? 
the, yes, this is a mother. Woman. Yes, this is a mother whose child left the, the center a long time ago, but she's afraid of stigma. Mm. You know, so it's a rather slow process. I mean, the counselor told me sometimes they invite the parents when they observe that certain inmates has not received, um, you know, um, visits for a very long time. They would reach out to the family. Sometimes they don't even want to be a part of it. Hmm. Well, we won't talk too much because honestly, I'm so curious. I could ask all the questions and I'm sure Miriam um, might be open to answering some of them. But we want you to all anticipate uh, the premiere of this documentary at 9.30 p.m. today. Great job, Miriam. And Thank you. What are some of the things they should expect? I mean, aside from what we've talked about, what should they really expect tonight? I mean, I just want to, I would like to just share that, um, yes, children do commit crimes. Mm. Um, and when they, they commit crimes... They, they, they do also have rights, and the law protects them. Yeah. And it beholds on all of us to help them to reform because they're supposed to be going, you know, to be reformed when they go to the center. When yeah. they are released, let's receive them. How we receive them will determine whether they become useful to us or mm. otherwise. Okay. And also, it could be anybody's child. I mean, yeah. another thing that came to me when I went to the center was I spoke to children who told me I was comfortable at home. My parents gave me everything. Hmm. But one bad decision, yeah. a friend who took me somewhere. So, you know, as parents, keep a closer eye on, on your child. Find out as much as possible who they're yeah, hanging, yeah, hanging with. with. Exactly. Yeah. It's important. And uh, do look forward to it. Fate of the Juvenile Offender documentary by Miriam Osei Ajiman at 9.30 p.m. today on TV3.